Now coming to the criteria of septic shock. First, let us look at systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Your heart rate will be greater than 90 beats per minute. The temperature can be greater than 100.4 Fahrenheit or less than 96.8 Fahrenheit. The respiratory rate can be greater than 20 per minute or the PaCO2 is less than 32 millimeter of mercury. The WBC greater than 12,000 per cubic millimeter or less than 4,000 per cubic millimeter or your band form is greater than 10 percent. If any of this two or more criteria is present, it is called systemic inflammatory response syndrome. If this systemic inflammatory response syndrome is present in addition to suspected or present source of infection, it is called sepsis. And this sepsis in addition with lactic acidosis or the systolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeter of mercury or the drop of systolic blood pressure of greater than 40 millimeter of mercury from normal in addition with organ dysfunction or hypotension or hypoperfusion, it is called severe sepsis. So, what is septic shock? This severe sepsis with hypotension despite adequate fluid resuscitation and organ injury, it is called septic shock. So, you have a pathogen, let it be bacteria or something, your cells gets activated, your WBC and macrophages gets activated and they release the inflammatory mediator, cytokines, interleukins, everything gets released and this inflammatory mediator is called leaky vessels and they can be small blood clots which leads to thrombosis where platelet plays a major role and there is widespread capillary dilatation which leads to hypotension and your organs, brain, lung, heart, liver and kidney will be affected. So, coming to the pathophysiology and symptom, there is going to be WBC recruitment, the vessel wall diameter increases and there is going to be increased leakiness, organ damage will be there. Initially in sepsis, there will be high cardiac output and tachycardia and in the later stage, your cardiac output comes down and later from warm skin due to peripheral vasodilatation becomes cold skin. The diagnosis for usual shock, you go ahead with lactate, ABG, bunt creatinine, but with regard to sepsis, there are certain biomarkers which we look at, CRP, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, procalcitonin and bread culture. With regard to procalcitonin, if it is between 0 0.05 nanogram per ml, it is local infection. If it is 0.5 nanogram per ml, it is sepsis. If it is 2 nanogram per ml, it is severe sepsis and it is septic shock when it is greater than 10 nanogram per ml. With regarding to antibiotic algorithm, if it is greater than 0.5 nanogram per ml, antibiotic is strongly encouraged. If it is between 0.25 to 0.5 nanogram per ml, antibiotics can be encouraged. If it is between 0.1 to 0.25 nanogram per ml, antibiotic is usually discouraged and if it is less than 0.1 nanogram per ml, antibiotic is strongly discouraged. Like we have enzyme profile for uh, acute myocardial infarction, you have inflammatory mediators in septic shock. Usually most of the inflammatory mediator tumor necrosis factor or interleukins will return to the baseline within 48 to 72 hours. Your Procalcitonin and lactate will take some more time. It usually takes around 3 to 4 days and CRP might take weeks to come back to normal. Now, coming to the management. Here, you have to go for a 3 prong attack. The first is hemodynamic management. Here, you go with SOSD paradigm. Here, you salvage, optimize, stabilize and then de-escalate. You try with fluid and vasoactive agent and modulation of host response, you try steroid or vasopressin and infection management, you go with antibiotics and source control.